Statistics and Excel, Poisson Distribution Potholes in Road Example Part Number 2. Get ready, taking a deep breath, holding it in for 10 seconds, looking forward to a smooth, soothing Excel. Here we First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But... But that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunching numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise. So you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. We are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet. However, we started in a prior presentation, so you could go back to that presentation, start with a blank worksheet, or you'd probably be okay starting from this point going forward with a blank worksheet. If you do have access to this workbook, three tabs down below. Example, practice blank. Example, in essence, answer key. Practice tab, having pre-formatted cells so you could get right to the heart of the practice problem. Blank tab is where we started with a blank worksheet and are continuing on with it at this point in time. Quick recap of what we did in a prior presentation, looking at a Poisson distribution situation, but this time instead of a line weighting situation, instead of going over time intervals, we're going in a pothole situation, looking at space intervals, space and the roads in this case. So we started out imagining that we went out and actually counted how many potholes were in the road for every 100 mile time span and we generated our data here using a random number generator which can be found in the data and the data analysis but it's not just simply random it's random in accordance with the Poisson distribution and the mean being 20. In real life we wouldn't really know the mean would be 20 but we would be counting the potholes and then possibly analyzing the data. When we then did analyze the data, we then grouped uh, the, the data together and said, okay, how many times in 100 miles were there 12 potholes? And there were four of them. We did 500 100 mile tests, right? How many times were there 13 potholes in our 500 tests? There were 17 of them. And then based on this data, we created our graph over here. We also took a look at the percent of each to the total, which could have a graph, similar graph this way. We then calculated the mean of our data set. So the average number of potholes was 20.14. That's pretty close to the variance, which gives us an indication that it might be a Poisson distribution. So now let's do the, an actual Poisson distribution, which will be a more exact curve now. So now we're gonna say, let's see how close it lines up to an exact Poisson curve. I'm gonna say this equals the mean. I'm just gonna pick up the same mean and I'm gonna copy that down, putting my cursor on it, copy it down per miles. I'm just copying my data over so we can use that same data, be, be able to see it here. So I'm gonna say this equals the 20 and this equals the 100 so that we just have that same data over here but it's tying into our other data set so if i change that other data set this data set will change automatically so now let's let's do our uh, x number of potholes so x by the way x e x is equal to number of potholes in the 100 mile in 100 mile span let's say and so i'm going to make let's make w a little bit smaller i'm going to cold control scroll in a bit all right and so then we're going to say this is going to be p of x 
which is going to be the Poisson. Uh, in this case, we're going to say what's the likelihood that we have that number of potholes. I'm going to make this a header format by going to the Home tab, Font Group, Black, White, Center, and that should do it. And then I'm going to go from 0, 1, 2, I'm going to bring it up to 100 again. Zero potholes, one pothole, two potholes, select in those three, putting my cursor on the fill handle, bringing it down to 100. Now it could go up to like infinity in theory, but in practice, you would think that if you had 100 potholes and 100 miles, you know, you're getting up to a lot of potholes. So if you're around 20 in the mean, you would think uh, it would be very unlikely that you're going to have a scenario of over 100 potholes, right? So then let's do our Poisson calculation. We're going to say this equals Poisson dot dist. And we'll, we're going to pick up the X, which in this case is going to be zero comma the mean is 20 i want to make that an absolute value so i'm going to select f4 on the keyboard so when i copy it down that 20 will not move down dollar sign before the v dollar sign before the one comma it's not going to be a cumulative so therefore not true but rather false because we just want the occurrences of zero only not everything up to zero even though zero is the first one here so we, we want to say false or we could put a uh, zero for false. Closing it up, zero is easier to do, I think, if you get used to it. But you can type in false if you want. I always misspell false, which is another reason. Uh, and then, and then you know, the whole classroom laughs at me because I can't spell false, even though I do, you know, true false, te whatever. Uh, any case, home tab and then number. Let's percentify this thing add some decimals so there we have it so if I scroll on down and if we total this thing up total it should add up to a hundred so let's do let's do it this way alt equals uh, I have to click off and on back it again alt equals there's the sum function automatically populated comes out to one or if I number group percentify it 100% okay okay so there uh there we have that let's go ahead and make this uh into a graph and possibly graph it to see how closely it matches up to our data on the right so let's do that i'm going to select let's just select this data and i'll select this entire thing not the total though not the tote and then scroll back up i'm going to go to the insert tab let's go to the charts group and insert a chart and so there we have it nice smooth curve so then i can go to my data up top and i want to make sure that this data on the right is picking up my numbers i don't want it to just make up just make up your own thing no excel these are the numbers you use you use my numbers that's how you do it don't just make up stuff and then we're going to say okay and then let's add also comparing that to the data that we actually counted. So I'm going to add another one here and I'm going to say, what's that data? It's coming from, and I want to pick up the percent ones and then the data, I'm going to delete this and hit this little thingy and control shift down and then control or shift up. So I don't pick up the 100. And so there we have it. Okay. And okay I think that should do it so let's go back on over and check it out so there's there's our data so you can see it's not a perfect lineup but you can see it's fairly well approximated right and let's do it let's do it again with a line graph you might want a a plus and a legend down here we should probably label our graphs uh, better but I'm gonna <laughs> I'm going to keep it at that. Uh, let, we could also scroll down and I, and I could make this, well, let's keep it down to 100. Let's do another one. I'm going to do this again with a line graph this time. So let's select this whole thing, ultra base another time. And let's just bring it down to like something a little bit less. Let's bring it down, I don't know, to 70, let's say 70. And then I'm going to go into insert 
charts. Let's do this one this time. Lines this time. Boom, let's do that one. So I'll bring it down. Let's format this thing. Let's, we're in the chart design data. So I'm gonna say the other data here. I don't want you making up your own numbers, uh, Excel. Do, these are the numbers you want down to 70. That's, that's what you do. That's what you do, you, you hear me? All right, and then I'm gonna add another data set over here representing our other data over here total percent and let's pick up this it's going to be equal to down to 70 again i'm just going to go down to 70 and boom okay i think that's good and okay let's check it out check it out man so there we have it so you can see it's not a perfect but it lines up pretty well and so now we're thinking so we have this one that kind of kind of outline in our our uh, data set which is kind of interesting uh but it lines up pretty well so you would think that we'd have some predictive power using the poisson distribution which would be easier to make predictions into the future than trying to extrapolate out some just random random you know set of a uh, set of set of conditions otherwise we, we you know it's going to be a lot more complicated for us to try to figure out how to extrapolate out just a random uh a set of items as opposed to an actual curve that we can plot into a formula right so and then so that is going to be that now we could also ask questions such as you know what if let's make z a little bit smaller what if we wanted to see how many potholes are from pot so we wanted to say like zero to uh five so let's say equal to and including five potholes so now i'm including five that's always going to be one of the sticking points so in this particular one you could sum that up equals the sum of our data here and say okay boom 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 and then make that a percent home tab numbers percentify and so you're down to point oh oh uh seven right so that you get between zero and five potholes from uh in a hundred mile span i can also do that with the cumulative so if i didn't plot this data i could say equals poisson dot dist and then i could take my x value is going to be i'm going to say five it's going up to and including if it was not including five i would have to go to up to four right because if it was up to but not including so you've got to be careful if you're working book problems with this and then the mean comma the mean uh and notice i picked up a mean here of 20 notice uh, the mean that we actually came out to with well let's keep this for now and then i'm going to say comma and then this time i want it to be cumulative so that it picks up to the up to that point not the not uh, probability of mass function therefore we're going to put a uh, one here and close it up and add some percents and there we have it now notice when I generated this data, we generated it based on this 20, which is a little different than the than the actual data we came for with our test. In other words, if I change this, I could change this number to this 20.14 because just which is pretty close to the same because what happened here is we used the 20 to generate the random numbers and then when I created the random numbers the mean of the random numbers is actually 20.14 so if we imagined doing the actual experiment it would be 20.14 would be our mean that we would probably then want to use in our you know poisson uh, distribution when trying to extrapolate uh forward so in any case there is that and then and then you could have questions like i mean it's likely that you can have a question like well what if it's going to be 
and, you know, you're probably going to say questions likely are going to be what's the likelihood that you're going to have, you know, up to 12 potholes. But it's but you might have questions like, well, what if we had between, uh, I'm going to say, equal to and including uh, 7 to, you know, 14 potholes. Now, again, when I say 7 to 14, you've got to be kind of careful and say, well, what do you mean by 7? Do you mean it's including 7? Or do you mean you're going between 7 and 14? Most of the time when people talk in just common language, they're saying, what's the likelihood that you will be including 7 through 14? But book problems, you got to be quite careful. If they're saying between 7 and 14, but not equaling 7 and 14, then you got to make sure you're picking up the space between. Now, how would you do that? Well, if I plotted it out, I can just take the sum here of from 7 to 14, right? 7 to 14, and then percentify that, add some decimals. If I'm using my cumulative, then I've got to take the cumulative up to the top point, which in this case is going to be 14. If I'm including the 14, then I'll go up to 14. If it's not including the 14, then I have to go up to 13. That's where you have to be careful. And then I subtract out everything that I don't want to include, which is up to 7. So, so I want to subtract everything out that I'm not including, so that means I'm going to go up to 6 because 7 is included. So let's, it'll look like this. We'd say this equals uh, this uh, equals Poisson. I forgot what we were doing in a second here. Poisson.dist. X is going to be the higher one. 14 because I'm including the 14 comma the mean is that 20.14 and then comma it needs to be cumulative or one that'll sum everything up you can imagine basically up to the 14 closing it up minus Poisson dot dist and then I want to subtract everything up to but not including the 7 because I got to subtract because I don't want to take out the 7 bit so I've got to go one down. So I'm going to take everything out down to six comma. The mean is 20.14 comma. And it's going to be cumulative again or one. Close it up and enter. And so there we have it. So I'm going to say uh, boom. So notice when you're working like book problems, more likely you're going to have these kind of calculations. In practice, it's quite nice, of course, to actually plot out, you know, the whole thing here, uh, and then and then and then that gives you a more pictorial view of of what exactly is going on. Which, in practice, I think that would be you know the way to go if you're trying to explain to somebody what is actually happening here. You, it's probably easier to do if you plot the whole thing out and say okay this is what we're doing instead of just entering the Poisson distribution like this and just saying well here's the prediction based on Poisson right it's, you, you, because that's not going to be too uh, intuitively understandable to a lot of people that don't know what you're talking about any case let's make this whole thing uh, bracketed let's put some brackets around this thing and format it let's do some formatting here uh, oh, by the way, so we have this data. The other, th we, the other thing we might do is see how close this data lines up to to what we got. So let's make one more right click. I'm going to insert one. Oh, not delete. Right click, insert, and let's just make this is the difference. So let's just see. This is going to be equal to what we got minus when we when we counted the potholes minus hold on did i pick up the right one i'm getting a little tired a little distracted here focus what we got minus this and then i'm going to copy that down and so there's our our differences that's another way you can kind of look at it and say okay how close is the poisson versus the data that we calculated uh, on on our testing. All right, let's go ahead and format some of this. So we're going to say there's that. Let's. I'm going to select this whole thing. Control Shift down. Make it blue and bordered. Home tab. Border it. Drop down on the bucket. I'm going to make it blue. If you don't have that blue, it's in the more colors. Standard blue. 
you don't have to make it blue but that's what i do and then control shift down and then border blue the blue is just a happier color than the green for me green reminds me of the days of the spreadsheets where i had terrible handwriting and and i couldn't even read my own writing but i tried so hard with my 10 key before the time in the in the dark ages before the before the uh excel times there was excel but people still insisted on on forcing me to do like a 10 key and the spreadsheet and it was it was cruel i think it, that was the point honestly it was supposed to be cruel and unusual punishment and uh it, it achieved its objective okay so let's do a spell check on it maybe a spell check that'd, that'd be, be nice, nice. Could review, review spell checky uh, potholes potholes all right there we have it 